In the cold, unwelcoming silence beyond our solar system, a ghost from Earth drifts alone. It does not breathe, it does not think, and yet it has become our only whisper in the vast cathedral of the cosmos. Voyager 1, launched in 1977, was never meant to last this long. It wasn't engineered to pierce into the unknown or to stare back into our cosmic origins. But here it is, still awake, still alive, and for reasons scientists never anticipated, it just turned its gaze. A shift so subtle, so precisely timed, that it could not have been accidental. And what it detected is not only unexpected, it's terrifying. At the very edge of interstellar space, Voyager 1 has picked up something that sent ripples through NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. At first, it was assumed to be a glitch, a common hiccup in such an old machine. But as data continued to stream in, cold and relentless, the realization struck. Voyager had seen something, something it wasn't supposed to, something no human instrument has ever witnessed before. And what's even more unsettling is that it's coming closer. When Voyager 1 was launched, its creators hoped it would live long enough to capture the beauty of Jupiter and Saturn. Maybe it would last a little longer, long enough to drift harmlessly into the dark. But no one imagined it would endure four and a half decades, defying cosmic radiation, dust impacts, and the silence of deep space. The probe was designed in an era where computers occupied entire rooms, and yet its heart, a primitive data system running on 68 kilobytes, still beats. Over the years, it has communicated from farther than any object ever made by humanity, traveling beyond the gravitational cradle of the sun and into the true void. For decades, it floated silently, dutifully transmitting data, until recently, when scientists noticed something they couldn't explain. Voyager 1, now 15 billion miles from Earth, adjusted its orientation. Not much, but enough. Enough to raise every eyebrow at NASA. This wasn't a random fluctuation, nor a drifting artifact of momentum. The shift was deliberate. And then came the transmission, a new kind of signal. One that didn't match solar winds, magnetic interference, or anything Voyager had encountered before. At first, the team suspected equipment degradation. After all, Voyager 1's instruments have endured the harshest possible environments. Temperatures approaching absolute zero, high energy particles, and the absence of any familiar reference points. But this was different. The signal was patterned, rhythmic. It pulsed in intervals that bore no resemblance to natural background radiation or cosmic microwave emissions. It had a structure, a cadence. And more disturbingly, it was being reflected, as if something in the darkness had bounced Voyager's emissions back toward it. Scientists ran simulations, checking for plausible explanations. Magnetic fields, plasma waves, gravitational lensing. All came back negative. Nothing in our models of interstellar space accounted for the behavior Voyager had just recorded. This meant only one thing. There was an object. An object not catalogued. An object possibly in motion. And for Voyager 1 to detect such a reflection, it meant that this unknown anomaly was enormous and not entirely passive. NASA's deep space network scrambled to decipher the burst patterns. When mapped visually, the intervals created geometrical shapes, sequences that suggested intentional design. A Fibonacci-like progression emerged within the gaps between the pulses. Was it mathematical coincidence or something more? The Voyager team, usually sober and cautious, grew nervous. Several members refused to speak to the press. Internal documents were redacted. Whispers surfaced that private consultations were held with theoretical physicists outside the space agency, even mathematicians specializing in cryptography and pattern recognition. What made matters worse was that Voyager 1, ever faithful, continued to record changes. The reflective signals grew stronger. Their structure became more complex. They appeared to evolve. Every time Voyager transmitted, something, someone, was replying. It became harder to dismiss as cosmic randomness. It was as if Voyager 1 had not just detected an object, but initiated a dialogue. Then something unthinkable happened. A mirrored signal bounced back containing the exact frequency profile of one of Voyager's earliest broadcasts, a data transmission sent during its Jupiter flyby in 1979. But this version had been modified. 
Embedded within it were anomalies, slight distortions that, when decoded, referenced Voyager's original telemetry code, now long obsolete. Whatever was responding wasn't just reflecting. It was learning. It had studied Voyager's history, its language, and its behavior. And now, it was speaking back in terms we could recognize. At this point, the project lead made a chilling statement in a closed-door briefing. Voyager has made contact with something that understands us, something that's been listening for a long time. No further details were made public, but soon after, NASA quietly reclassified segments of Voyager's ongoing data as restricted. Scientists familiar with the mission began to vanish from media circuits. And then, the final confirmation came. Trajectory projections suggest that the object is now moving, slowly, steadily, not away from Voyager, but toward it. As Voyager 1 continued to transmit, mission scientists noticed something even more unnerving. The reflected signals, once faint and fragmented, began to show signs of time distortion. The timestamps embedded in the returning signals didn't match the expected speed of light delay. Some data seemed to return before it was transmitted. Others looped in impossible sequences, suggesting localized disruptions in time itself. This shook the astrophysics community to its core. The only known entities capable of affecting time are gravitational singularities, black holes, yet there were none detected in Voyager's vicinity. Unless, what Voyager was detecting wasn't a celestial body, but an artificial structure manipulating space-time, a controlled anomaly, the kind of technology that not even our most ambitious theoretical models dare to propose, something capable of creating ripples in reality responding in real time, and bending the fundamental rules that govern the universe. The very fact that Voyager's antiquated instruments were registering these distortions suggested that the anomaly wasn't hiding. It wanted to be seen. In desperation to make sense of it, NASA brought in cryptographers, linguists, and even AI specialists. The signal, when run through advanced pattern recognition software, showed layered modulation, Hidden within the basic pulse sequences were additional levels of data, like folders within folders. These weren't random sequences, but deliberate constructs, prime numbers, molecular formulas, and even a representation of Voyager 1's own golden record etched in binary. The conclusion was devastatingly clear. This object, this presence, not only understood how to read our messages, it understood our biology, our history, and even our intentions. Embedded in one of the sequences was something resembling a DNA strand, not human, but structured, organized, as if the entity was offering its own biological blueprint in response. The implications were staggering. Were we being answered by a civilization or by something else entirely? Not life as we know it, but intelligence so vast, so foreign, that it needed mathematics as the only common language. The scientific community split into factions, some researchers saw the discovery as the most hopeful moment in human history, proof that we are not alone and that we are worthy of contact. But others were deeply alarmed. If this intelligence had the ability to intercept, decode, and modify transmissions across billions of miles, and if it possessed the capacity to manipulate space-time, then it also had the ability to observe us, influence us, or destroy us. The reflective signals became increasingly complex, harder to interpret, almost playful in their mimicry of human communication. They began echoing Voyager's earliest human music samples, Bach, Beethoven, and traditional folk songs, yet slightly altered, reinterpreted as if passed through a different cultural lens. It was breathtaking and chilling all at once. These weren't just messages. They were acts of acknowledgement or surveillance. And in the middle of it all, Voyager 1 was the bridge a 46-year-old artifact floating alone, now caught in a conversation humanity never expected to have. And then, it moved. NASA's deep space network picked up minute gravitational fluctuations near Voyager 1, consistent with the displacement of a massive object. Not a random trajectory, not a comet. Something slow, deliberate, and calculating. The object had altered its course. It was no longer drifting passively. It was accelerating toward Voyager 1. Alarm bells rang. What kind of entity could track and maneuver with such precision in interstellar space? No known force could explain the readings, and yet the gravitational signatures were clear. Whatever it was, it had mass, 
It had control, and now it had intent. Voyager's aging instruments captured partial visual data, but what came back was distorted. Not a sphere, not a ship, not any geometric structure humanity would recognize. It shimmered with complexity, as if its form were multidimensional, existing in more than three spatial axes, like a hyperobject bleeding through space. Voyager 1 had not merely stumbled across something unknown, it had awakened it. And Earth, watching helplessly from 15 billion miles away, was now no longer alone or in control. As the world's eyes remained fixed on Voyager 1, the silence became unbearable. That final transmission, distorted, fragmented, and abruptly cut off, echoed in the minds of scientists and citizens alike. It wasn't just a malfunction, it felt deliberate, controlled, as though Voyager 1 had served its purpose and had been dismissed. For the first time in decades, the probe that never stopped talking had gone dark, and its silence spoke louder than any signal ever could. In the aftermath, global space agencies convened in secret. Emergency panels were formed, not just of scientists, but of military advisors, philosophers, theologians. Because what had just occurred wasn't a scientific anomaly, it was a paradigm shift. Our place in the universe had changed. Something, or someone, was out there. Watching, responding, approaching. And yet, the greatest question remains unanswered. Was this contact an invitation or a warning? As Voyager 1 fades into the void, it leaves behind more than data. It leaves behind a haunting truth that the cosmos is not silent and that something ancient, intelligent, and possibly beyond our comprehension has just opened its eyes. Now it's our turn to decide what comes next. Will we reach back or will we look away? and pretend we didn't hear the universe whisper back.